Previously, my world's terrain was a simple series of repeating mountains, but this quickly gets boring. To level up our world, we need to answer a question. Every Minecraft world starts as an infinite flat nothing. It ends up with such varied and realistic terrain. But how? The answer comes in the form of random numbers. First, let's take this boring, flat world. For every block on the surface, we'll get a random number 0 through 9 and put a pillar there that amount tall. And here is the result, a chaotic mess of pillars. We need to find a better, smoother method that'll give a more cohesive landscape. So, how about we use a sine wave? This time, each block can be given a height depending on where it is on the curve. Here we go. This time we get that smoother terrain, but now it's too boring and predictable. So, what's the next step? Well, first we need to review the concept of noise generation, which is what we've been attempting. So far, for each block on the surface, we've been generating a number and scaling the height with it to make terrain. It's essentially a math function where we input the position of a block on our flat surface and get a random value. This random value is more commonly called noise. If we represent this noise value as a black or white color and aggregate them for the entire surface of the world, we get an image like this, which is called a noise map. It's an easy way to visualize all of these random numbers we are generating, with black values representing lower heights and white values representing taller heights. So logically, to get better terrain, we just need a better noise generation function which will give us a better looking noise map. This is where a specific, beautifully crafted type of noise comes in, Perlin noise. Perlin noise was invented a few decades ago for the 1982 movie Tron to give it more natural random patterns for CGI effects. This noise is much more complicated than a simple sine function, which allows it to return values that give a much more natural terrain. Now, here's what our world looks like with a single layer of Perlin noise. It's worth noting Minecraft also strongly leverages Perlin noise to generate its own terrain. However, rather than using one singular layer of it, Minecraft uses multiple layers to get even more interesting terrain, with each layer of noise exaggerating certain features. Let me show you what I mean. As of the recent 1.18 update, Minecraft uses seven main types of noise to shape the world, all Perlin noise variants. A temperature map so cold biomes are not next to hot ones, a humidity map so humid jungles are not next to arid deserts, continentals to determine how far from the coast we are, with high continentals leading to mountains and low values leading to oceans, erosion to flatten areas out, peaks and valleys for, of course, peaks and valleys, depth for deep areas like the depths of the oceans, and weirdness for some beta Minecraft spunk. All of these seven types of noises are added together, giving the realistic but fun terrain of 1.18. Minecraft is a great pioneer in the field of world generation, so I had to take inspiration from their work. In front of you now is my current world, rolling hills leading to plains, to lakes, to mountains. Along with the new terrain comes a few new changes. Biomes, flowers, and grasses to dot the landscape, better clouds, and even modding support. We'll review all of these in detail in a little bit. A few people commented about the desire to have a great variety of height and depth, with vast plains leading to extremely tall mountains. The current mountain here is about 500 blocks tall, but since our chunks are made of cubes, our wood height is effectively infinite, because our chunks can stack on top of each other unlike Minecraft's chunks. Now, before we move on, let's take a closer look at how our world generation works. In this file, all the noise maps for the world can be easily controlled by the player. By default, we have our own versions of the standard noise maps used in Minecraft, but as many as needed can be added. For instance, here's the main noise for creating mountains, peaks and valleys, and the multiplier is set to make them hundreds of blocks tall. If we want our mountains to be thousands of blocks tall, we can simply add a 1 before the multiplier and see the result next time we create a new world. In effort to support modding, the player has full control over how the terrain is shaped, they just need to change this file. Along with these changes in terrain, I've also added support for a flexible, moddable biome system visible from this biome's JSON file. So far I have the basic, forest, desert, plains, cherry forest, autumn forest, and snow biome. However, I've also been taking a peek at the source code for Minecraft's most popular terrain overhauling mods for inspiration to make biomes even more varied and beautiful. My ultimate goal is to expand my biome system to allow for extremely complex and flexible terrain, yet be easy to configure for anyone wanting to make their own versions of beautiful terrain in their own world. 
Minecraft has done a beautiful job doing this in their 1.18 update. They have a flexible JSON system you can see and use here for the Minecraft mod Terralith. Within a few devlogs, I hope to have a similar system in place inspired by them, although perhaps even more powerful and easily moddable. Geysers, volcanoes, cracks in the earth, rock formations, and so much more I hope to be easily possible. But enough of the terrain. With all these new changes, I decided to overhaul our clouds as well. We had just added them last devlog, but our clouds had completely flat tops and bottoms and were a bit too thick as well. Let's compare them to our current clouds. Previously, our clouds were just generated in a 3D grid using a type of noise called whirly noise, which is commonly used for clouds. However, since our clouds noise generator didn't know where our clouds would start and end, I just cut off the noise very abruptly, which gave them a completely flat top and bottom. To fix this, I did what's called a fall off function, which makes the clouds fall off smoothly as they get to the edges, given the effect you see here. I also spaced the clouds out a bit more, hopefully making the sky a bit more realistic. Let me know what you think of this version. And finally, let's hop to our first gameplay mechanic, if we can call it that. Our hotbar is now fully functional with all the basics you would expect. 1 to 9 slots, a scroll wheel, and the ability to middle click select a block for creative mode. The inventory system itself is in the works, though not anywhere functional yet, so you can expect that soon. Besides our hotbar, a majority of the last couple of months were actually spent on bug fixes, and a big uplift to the code base in general. Our multi-threading code added in a previous devlog was also overhauled, since crashes were frequent due to what's called race conditions. The rate casting algorithm for the player to place blocks was also overhauled, since the previous version had some bugs and was not quite so optimal. I only plan to mention them here, but I can make a full video on both these topics in the future if it sounds interesting. And there we go, that's our progress for this time, but we're far from over. I have so many plans for the future and so much unfinished that I was planning from the last devlog. What kind of things do you all want to see added? What about for gameplay mechanics? Right now I want the final game to be a mix of Minecraft, Terraria, Skyrim, and a few other things. What's your favorite mechanics from these games, or your favorite survival in RPG games? Let me know, I love hearing your feedback. And that's all for now, I'll leave it off with some gameplay. Hope you all have had some happy holidays, and I'll see you around, Bye bye